I'm Dryden Hill, and today I'm going to be giving you some tips to make sight reading a little less scary. Let's get started. Sight reading is the act of creating music as you are reading it for the first time. It's a subset of musical literacy, basically being able to quickly and efficiently learn new music. Now, why would we practice sight reading? Well, the faster you can read a new piece of music, the faster you can get it learned. Compare veteran musicians sitting down and taking less than an hour to learn a new tune to a novice percussionist needing to write in each note and each rhythm. It's painstaking. Now, by practicing sight reading, you're going to be reinforcing the neural pathways dedicated to music comprehension. Your counting, your note identification, interval identification, and musical flexibility are all going to see marked improvement. There are a lot of other benefits to sight reading. For percussionists in particular, it's a fantastic exercise to get your eyes off of the keyboard and up here to where your band director lives. As Nancy Zeltzman put it, it is impossible to really grow as a musician without simply playing a lot of music. Just by finding new pieces to sight read, you're gonna expose yourself to new pieces, new artists, new composers that you may not have found otherwise. To get started, we're gonna need a fresh piece of music, something you haven't seen before. The IMSLP is a fantastic resource for this. Everything is public domain, and all of the composers on there are titans of music history. Every single one is going to be worth checking out. This practice is about speed as well as efficiency, so we're going to go ahead and set ourselves a 10-minute timer. The goal is going to be reading this new piece of music to completion during that window. Before we play any notes, we're going to have to complete some analysis. Reading ahead and knowing what comes next is absolutely essential to be successful at sight reading. First, find the time signature. Are there any time changes? If you're playing in an odd meter like 7-8, it's extremely important that you also understand the pulse of this piece you're about to read. There's a huge difference between 1-2-1-2-1-2-3 and 1-2-3-1-2-1-2. Second, we're going to be taking a look at the road map. Locate any repeats, DCs, DS, and then find where they go back to. Take a stab at identifying the form. You won't be able to fake any of that when you're playing with an ensemble, so this is very important to get accurate. Next, identify your key signature. This is going to help you lock into the correct notes, and it's going to assist us with our next step. Next, we'll be looking at the harmony. Once you're locked into a key, identify the tonic chord, see if there's any sections where you've got predominant, dominant chords, or sections where you've moved to the relative minor. To identify these sections, look for the accidentals. Not only will knowing where the accidentals are be very helpful to your reading, they won't sneak up on you, but if you find a repeating accidental that's consistent, you've likely found a new tonality. Similar to oral training and oral skills, this is going to help you get a feel for how the piece sounds without even playing a note. Next, we're going to identify challenge spots. Wide leaps, runs, difficult rhythms, dense music. Find those things so that they don't sneak up on you while you're sight reading. Locate any sequences, patterns, or repeats. By making note of these, you can save a little bit of brain power, and this will allow you to scan ahead while you're still playing the repeating portion. Last but not least, dynamics and articulation. The goal here is to play music on the first run through, not to just get all of the correct notes. This means that you should be striving to play all of your dynamics and articulations that you can. I know this is a little bit difficult for some younger players, but you should strive to it. It's going to be worth it. It will pay off in your reading skills. Finally, after a few minutes of analysis, it's time to play. First, I sing and visualize the song inside my head at a manageable tempo. Then I take my metronome and click it down a few clicks below that. Because we're trying to play the music correctly on our first take, it is absolutely essential that you sight read at a tempo where you can be successful. If that's 40 BPM, that's perfect. If it's 200 BPM, you are way better at this than I am. And now, we read. We're going to be treating this like a performance, so don't stop for mistakes. You need to keep up the tempo, and you want to keep pushing through the piece as best as you can. Once you've reached the end, congratulations, you've done a sight reading. Now that we've done our first run through, there's still some more work to be done. Think through your performance and identify any mistakes, any sections that tripped you up. Think through them and try to come to a solution. If you missed a certain chord or a certain inversion, for example, take a few seconds, read through the chord, make sure you've got the correct inversion, so that when you come back through here, you've got it, no issues. Then, turn around, play it again. 
improve your reading and fix your mistake. And once you've read through it the second time, we are good to go. You've moved beyond sight reading into a little thing I like to call practice. Congratulations. You've just sight read a new piece of music. Okay, I'm just gonna film myself going through this whole process one time and uh, we'll, we'll see it in action. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more vibraphone and educational music content. My name is Dryden Hill, and remember, play the music that you love.